Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kremlin News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Good to have you with us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. We begin tonight with some breaking news. An update from Silver Mountain on an avalanche rescue that happened this morning. We now know one person died and five more were rescued. It all happened in the Wardner Peak area of the mountain off of Chairlift 4. Silver Mountain Ski Patrol, the Coeur d'Alene Search and Rescue K-9 team, and the Shoshone County Sheriff's Office all responded to the scene. Taylor Vito and Brandon Jones have team coverage on the rescue and avalanche conditions tonight. Let's start with our Taylor Vito who spoke with witnesses. Taylor. Well, Mark, at this hour, still actively area just to make sure that everyone is found. Now you mentioned a, a witness that witness photographer Roger Hatcher. They told us that they were in they were All right, that's our Taylor Vido. We're clearly having some issues with his camera shot there in Kellogg, Idaho. But as you can see, Tom, that gondola was still operating there at Silver Mountain Resort. And again, an update just from their Facebook page within the past 15 minutes, Silver Mountain Resort saying that one person died, five more were rescued from that avalanche. Those five they described as having only minor injuries. Mm -hmm. but. My goodness, an avalanche on Silver Mountain, not something we hear about often here, Tom. No, and the Wardner Peak area is an area that features powder snow, mm -hmm. and they've been getting a lot of snow lately. Of course, the problem with the avalanche is, of course, is you get uh, different densities of snow. We've right. had rain on top of snow, then we've had more snow on top of that, and when you have those different density of snowpack layers, mm -hmm. One of them just starts to give way and right. that causes the avalanche. Not to mention that wind yesterday and today. Absolutely, right? that also played. And now we're tracking even more heavy snow on the way. We have an avalanche warning in effect in those areas that you see shaded in blue right now. That's through uh, tomorrow morning at about 6 a.m. Again, in northern Idaho, those uh, areas that are shaded in blue, obviously those include areas around the ski resorts as well. Over on the west side of the state, uh, we've got flood warnings in effect. When you see that area shaded in green, so lots and lots of stuff happening there as well. So here's what we know. Rain tonight and again tomorrow morning. We'll look for heavy snow possible Friday and Saturday. It's going to become much colder next week and more snow is expected next week as well. Look at the rain on the west side of the state. Mark, that is headed our way late tonight and in the overnight hours. But then I think we may see some clearing by tomorrow afternoon. So rain and wind overnight down to about 36. We'll look for a daytime high of 42 degrees uh, tomorrow. Again, morning rain possibly Possible snow showers too, but mostly rain in the valleys and then in the afternoon uh, becoming clearing here. And then the heavy snow begins on Friday, may continue on Saturday and then linger through Sunday. And then next week we're going to see overnight lows in the teens and daytime highs below freezing. So cold winter weather on the way, especially next week. And when we get that shot reestablished with our Taylor Vito and Brandon yeah. Jones there in Kellogg, we'll be sure to go back to them just as soon as we can figure that out. Thank you, Tom. Well, just minutes ago, we learned that Iraq's Al-Assad Air Base, which houses U.S. troops, has been hit with a rocket attack. A U.S. military official confirmed at least nine rockets have hit the base so far. There's been no word on possible injuries at this hour. President Donald Trump defended his decision to target Iranian General Qassem Soleimani, calling him a terrorist. The president says Soleimani was preparing more attacks on Americans. He was planning a very big attack and a very bad attack for us and other people, and we stopped him. Iran has vowed revenge for the killing, and Pentagon sources called Iranian military movements, quote, very troubling. The U.S. military is moving more assets in the meantime, including B-52 bombers. Trump administration officials are beginning to brief members of Congress about the president's decision to launch the strike and its repercussions. And the Pentagon is sending thousands of troops to the Middle East with the rise in tensions with Iran. Rochelle Hurtle and her husband, Sergeant Alexander Hurtle, were visiting her family in Ohio when he got the call to head to the Middle East. Overseas deployment are part of a soldier's job, but that doesn't make them any easier for the families left behind. The previous two deployments um, were all planned. And so we had time to get ready. This one was this one threw us for a loop. For security reasons, the soldiers have been ordered not to use their cell phones and not tell their families where they're going. And if history is any guide, they could be gone for nine months or even more. 
We want to get back now to our top story this evening. Again, that's that avalanche over at Silver Mountain. We have reestablished that shot with our Taylor Vido, I understand. So an update from Silver Mountain on that avalanche. Taylor, we understand one person is dead. Five others are injured. Yeah, Mark, that's right. And at this hour, search and rescue efforts are still underway up on the mountain and search and rescue dogs are being used. Now, earlier in the show, we were uh, trying to explain that uh, one of our photographers, Roger, Hat Roger Hatcher, just within the last hour, was speaking with a couple of witnesses who were skiing up on the mountain when that avalanche happened. They were skiing to the area in the aftermath to try to help look for people. They told us that at least two people were okay. They found those people, but they noticed a third person who uh, was blue in the face, as they described it. They were having chest compressions done on them, and then that person was taken away from the scene on a stretcher. But again, as you mentioned, one person is dead, five others with minor injuries. Now, those photos you just uh, saw right there are from Coeur d'Alene, from the Coeur Fire Department's K-9 team. They were called to Silver to assist with what they described as a missing person search. That was around 1 p.m., about two hours after the avalanche first happened. Now, again, the sheriff's office says, uh, or excuse me, authorities, five people all recovered, but the one was died. Due to recent snow and winds, various areas of northern Idaho were under an avalanche advisory today. Silver had received over a foot of fresh snow in the last 24 hours and additional snow the day before. Of course, avalanches aren't unheard of in this part of Shoshone County, Idaho. More on that in just a little bit. But just last year, an avalanche closed traffic on Interstate 90 near at nearby Lookout Pass. A skier who was on at Silver Mountain this morning when the avalanche happened told us that he heard ski patrol doing avalanche control earlier in the day. I mean, obviously there was avalanche conditions. They were you could hear dynamite. They were blowing for shooting off dynamite for to blow avalanches, obviously, but. Um, uh, I was on the lift, overheard a ski patrol on the radio talking about people buried in an avalanche. And that avalanche advisory remains in effect uh, for the rest of today as we still speak right now. With that, I want to bring in my colleague Brandon Jones, who, uh, Brandon, you've been following this story today as well, but actually earlier today you spoke with an avalanche expert, I understand. Yeah, so I actually spoke with an avalanche forecaster, and he gave me a list of five red flags that you want to watch out for as you're out here, and that might hint at the possibility of an avalanche. I want to go ahead and read those off to you really quick. The first thing you want to look out for is recent heavy snowfall. An inch per hour is enough to rapidly increase avalanche danger and it only takes a few feet of snow for conditions to swing out of control. Next up is a mix of wet and rainy snow. That increases the chance of an avalanche along with warming temperatures that add weight to things. There's been a ton of recent changes in the weather over the last few days and I'm sure that has played a role in what we've seen at Silver Mountain today. You're also going to want to keep an ear out for concerning noises. Shooting cracks can be very telling of possible danger. It almost sounds like something is coming out of the ground and makes these whomping type sounds. But what can also be very telling is the wind. It plays a huge factor in avalanches because it moves a lot of the snow around. For example, it doesn't have to be snowing for snow to be placed into an unstable area. Pay attention to that and where snow is coming from. And the last thing you want to look out for is recent avalanche activity. Use caution if there's been recent ones in the area because grounds can be unstable. If you follow these red signals, it could save you in the future. If you see any of those signs or a combination of those, it is telling you that uh, you have to be really careful about where, um, where you put yourself. Yeah, yeah. Kevin also told me to just check for advisories in the mountains and make sure you're aware of the weather. So that's what I have for you right now. And we'll we'll check back in with you all at the studio. All right. Some good advice right yeah. there, Brandon. Thank you very much. Always a good idea to check the forecast. Before Absolutely. Heading up for skiing, right? Yes. Um, OK, we'll move on for the moment. At least 24 people have been arrested for setting some of the fires that killed two dozen people and destroyed thousands of buildings in Australia. Yeah, the New South Wales Police Force says it has taken legal action against more than 180 people for 205 bushfire related offenses since November 8th. 53 are people, uh, 53 are people who are accused of failing to comply with a total fire ban and 47 actually discarded lit cigarettes or matches. 
Forty of those people are juveniles. If convicted, those charged could face up to 25 years in prison for property damage with the intention of endangering life, 25 years for manslaughter, and uh, up to 21 years for starting a bushfire. Hmm. More than 70 American firefighters, meantime, are headed to Australia to battle the wildfires. It includes two firefighters from Washington. Both Washington firefighters are from federal units. The last time U.S. firefighters went to Australia was all the way back in 2010. And Puerto Rico is back in the news, and it's not good news. The governor has declared a state of emergency in the U.S. territory following two days of powerful earthquakes. The latest struck just before dawn as a magnitude 6.4 quake cut power to the entire island. At least one person was killed. Puerto Rico's seismic network says the shallow quakes and aftershocks are occurring along three faults on the island's southwest region. Seismologists say it's impossible to predict when the quakes will stop or whether they'll get stronger. Good news here, nurses at Sacred Heart and Holy Family will not be going on strike. The union representing those nurses and Providence Management reached a tentative agreement at 3 o'clock this morning. They've been negotiating for the last 14 months. Union leaders say the tentative agreement includes key provisions sought by nurses. Our Shana Waltower has been following this story. She will break down the deal tonight in our 5 o'clock broadcast. Mm -hmm. Meantime, a two-year strike is over at the Lucky mm -hmm. Friday mine in North Idaho. In a narrow vote late last night, the miners' union approved a deal with Hecla Mining. Yeah, it was an 86 to 78 vote. Miners approved a three-year deal today. The uh, miners actually, the miners' union is asking for volunteers now to take down those picket signs. Hecla leaders hope to have the mine up and running by the end of this year. Back here closer to home, Spokane's Texas Roadhouse is set to open on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Restaurant leaders will hold test runs next week to train cook and other staffs. They'll serve Spokane firefighters and police officers in those test runs. The restaurant will open to the public on January 20th. And authorities say that a suspected drunk driver hit a parked Washington State Patrol trooper's car. The crash happened last night near Union Gap. The vehicle hit the back of the trooper's car, causing it to flip. No injuries are reported. Well, laws change from state to state, especially at the start of a new year, which can be confusing for cities straddling the state line. We explain how Washington's new car seat law may impact people living in Idaho. Starting this year, Washington state's car seat laws are more strict. Now that means the rules in Idaho are different than the ones in Washington. So let's break down the differences in each state's laws. Idaho's laws say that any kid six years old or younger must be in a car seat appropriate for their age and size. But Washington's new law says that any kid under 13 years old or under four foot nine needs to be in a booster seat. That's a pretty big difference. So what does it mean for people who commute back and forth? Basically, you have to follow the traffic laws of the state you're driving in. Really, following the car seat laws are no different than the fact that you have to follow speed limit or blinker laws when driving in a different state than your home state. So if you do find yourself not up to speed with Washington law though, the state patrol says that you could get fined as much as $139 for not having a child in a car seat if they're supposed to be. And even though Idaho's actual laws aren't as strict, their transportation department still recommends that kids be in a booster seat until they are eight years old or four foot nine. But laws aside, Idaho's child passenger safety coordinator says either way, we ultimately should be following best practices to keep kids as safe as possible in the car. In studio, I'm Nicole Hernandez.